Hello, video on non-parametric testing in the S3 syllabus, by which we really mean uh, Wilcox and sign rank testing. Um, there's two types of question that we're going to see, one which has a single sample of data like this. There we go. Um, it just says it's a random sample. Or secondly, we're going to see pair testing. Yeah, so we're going to see two lines of two two lines of data here, so like before and after, like we've got here. But we've got named um, items, people, the people, you know, the people, or authorities, or uh, whatever, and the data for those two pieces of data are for the same authority, same person being set out there. And they're basically the two questions they're going to ask us, and they're going to ask us to find, uh, carry out a hypothesis test on those using Wilcox and signed rank. Okay, so I'm going to quickly run through a couple of questions just to see how they run. I'm assuming that you understand how to do Wilcox and signed rank testing um, in the first place. But let's just check out the things they will ask us um, to do. So let's read the first question. B1, under what circumstances might one use a Wilcox and sign rank testing in order to test a hypothesis about a median of a population? And what distribution assumption is needed? Okay, so there's two marks here, two points to make. In what circumstances? Well, where the distribution is unknown. Yeah. So we know nothing about the distribution, so therefore we have to fall back on the median because 50% probability is above it and 50% is below. And what assumption do we have to make for our second mark? We have to assume that the distribution is symmetric about the mean, so median Apologies about the median. Why are we having to make that? Well, we're actually having to make that to use the critical values from the Wilcoxon uh, table rather than the actual distribution itself. Okay, that's how they're calculated. Okay, let's go on to part two and see what they're actually asked us to do in this case. Um, they have lots of words here. You've got to read them to get the context, but um, so it's worth doing that just so you get things the right way round. Um, but then we need to dig out what the actual test is they're asking us to do. So, on a stretch of road uh, leading out of town, town centre, highway officials have been monitoring the speed of the traffic in case it is increased. There's an indication of what they're going to ask us to do in a minute. Previously, it is known that the median speed on this stretch was 28.7 miles per hour. A random sample of 12 vehicles on the stretch uh, were taken and the following speeds recorded. So here are all our speeds. So that's our test data. Yeah, here's our test data. Okay. 12 uh, sample points, a sample of 12, yeah. Carry out a test, they mean a hypothesis test, at 5% significance level to see whether, so here's our wording we're interested in, you know, so I put a little quotes around it, the speed of the traffic on this stretch of road seems to have increased on the whole. Seems to have increased? Well, they're asking us to test whether it has increased, as far as they're concerned, aren't they? So, first thing we need to do then, is for this part of the question is to work out our hypotheses. So what's our H naught? Well, that's always our unchanged one, isn't it? So our median speed of population, remember, please put population in uh, because that's what we're doing. This is a sample from our population is unchanged. Yeah. So what does that mean? Our median speed is 28.7 mph. And what's our H1 here? Well, that, that's our median has increased. That's what they've asked us to do, isn't it? Is that the M is greater than 28.7 mph. Yeah? So we're looking at a one tail test, aren't we, here? And we've got a 5% significance level, as they've asked us for. Okay. So, first thing we need to do is to um, sign and rank the data. 
compared to 28.7. So I've set this out below, so let's use that, and we'll just very quickly go through it. So here are our values, here are our speeds, yeah, this is our test data here, and the first um, a row, here they all are. And what are we doing? We're comparing them to our speed before, 28.7. So in the first sample, the speed is now 32.0, um, so that is an increase, it's a positive 3.3. The next one is 29.1, so that's an increase of a zero point, positive 0 0.4, isn't it? The next one's actually gone down, is below the 28.7, so that's minus 2.6, yep. So that's what our yellow line is. So that's now, we've compared it to our 28.7 and we've worked out what's above and below. Then we need to rank the data, so we find the one with the absolute value nearest to 28.7. In this case, it's this value, 28.6, isn't it, because it's got... That's just a minus 0 0.1. We're only interested in the 0 0.1 because that's the one closest to zero. So we're going to rank that number one. And we know the sign of that is negative, isn't it? Because it's less than. Yeah. If we went and found the next one, we'd be looking at the 28.5 because that's only 0.2 away. So that's going to be my second ranking and that's negative. My third one is going to be the 29.1 because that's only 0 0.4 away but it's positive, yeah? So for each one in the green here, I've put the rankings. So the first one, the 32 is ranked number eight, and then the next one's ranked number three, etc. The next one's number six. And then I've put below whether they're positive or negative. So the first one is positive because it's greater than 28.7, yeah? So we've got all those rankings. Then we add up all the rankings. We add up all the positive rankings. So we've got our eight, three, and our six, our 12, our 11, our 9, our 10, and our 7, and that lot adds up to 60. Then I'm going to rank, add up all my negative rankings. So here I've got a minus 1, a minus 4, minus 5, and an, um, sorry, minus 2, I should have said there, minus 5 and a minus 4, which all adds up to 18. So I've now got two rankings. Now, quick check at this point to make sure you haven't made a calc error. As you can see, we've actually added up the numbers 1 to 12, and we know and we have a formula for what they should total. That's going to be our n, n plus 1 over 2. In this case, that's going to be 12 times 13 over 2, which is 78. And our two values here, 60 plus 18, add up to 78, tick. So our, our actual manual calculations are correct. Now, from these two w values here, we've got to pick our test statistic, um, UG, the, the table that we're going to work with gives the lower value, so we take our test statistic as being the lower in value here, so we're going to use the W minus. So our test statistic is going to be my, it's going to be 18, yep. Now we need to find our critical value. And in our tables, we need to look up our Wilcox and critical value for one tail test at 5% and our number of um, items in the sample is 12. So if we go to our table, I'm going to put our table up on the screen. This is on page 30 of the MEI um, table book. We're interested in the Wilcox and single sample and paired sample tests. Don't look at the two sample tests, which is earlier in the book. We need the single sample test. Then we need to go to the column that we're interested in, where we're interested in one tail and 5%. So that's the first column we're interested in then. And then we need to go down the, um, the column till we find, um, you can see here that this is about, um, the table shows us our N value, that's our sample size. So we're interested in going down to where we get to our sample of 12. And therefore, um, the intersection of the 12 and the 5% one tail gives us a critical value here of 17. Okay. So there we go, our critical value is 17. Now, just to make us think about it, I always write our number line out here with all our outcomes. So we could have had a Wilcoxon value anywhere between 0 and 78. If there was no difference, we'd have expected those two values to be about the same. They would be at 30, so our, our null hypothesis effectively would be a Wilcoxon value of 39. Yeah. We now know our critical value is 17, so our critical region is this region over on the left-hand side here. There we go. 
between 0 and 17, and we know our test statistic is 18, yeah? So it's not in the critical region. So what are we going to do? Well, that's going to be not significant. Yeah, not significant. Um, our test statistic, 18, is greater than our critical value, 17. It's not significant. And we would go on and write insufficient evidence. to indicate that then as ever I'd recommend you go back to the wording so let's go back to the wording they asked us to look at insignificant evidence um, to indicate that the speed of the traffic on this stretch of road um, and I replace this seems to have with has only because it doesn't make sense as sentence otherwise um, increased on the whole. You could leave it as speed of the traffic and the stretch. It seems it does not seem to have increased. Uh, does not seem to have increased. Yeah, there's nothing to indicate that it has increased. Okay, here's our second question, and this is a pair testing question. Again, we've got a lot of words here. It's always worth reading them to put us into context. Um, in order to prevent the control and spread of infectious diseases, the government has um, various vaccination schemes on the pro on such one one such program requires people to receive a booster injection at the age of 18. It is felt that the proportion of people receiving the booster could increase if a publicity campaign is undertaken. In order to assess the effectiveness of the campaign, the health authorities, because this is what we got down here in the table, across the country have been asked to report the percentage of 18-year-olds receiving the booster before and after the campaign. The results for a randomly chosen sample of nine authorities are as follows. So here we have our authorities. Authority A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and here are percentages before and after. So for Authority A, before 76% of 18-year-olds received the booster, and after 82% did. Okay, so that's our pair data, isn't it? And it's this is our test data. Okay, so let's see what they've asked us to do. This sample is to be tested to see whether the campaign appears to have been whether, every time we get to a weather, we, we cut our quotes, the campaign appears to be successful in raising the percentage receiving the booster. So that's really what we're going to be testing. Explain why the use of pair testing is appropriate in this circumstance. Uh, appropriate. So what are we going to say that? As ever, we'll always just write, it eliminates other factors. Other factors. So we're left with so we're left with the authority um, left with the uh, campaign. Yeah, we've eliminated the fact there might be a difference between authorities because we've compared this authority before and after. Yeah, we've not done anything else. Yeah, so we're left with effect, uh, left with effective campaign. Yeah. That's the factor we're interested in. That's why we design our uh, pair testing to do that. Okay, next part. Carry out an appropriate Wilcoxon test. Signed rank at 5% level. Yeah, so what's the first thing we need to do is we need to set our, our hypotheses. So let's do number two before we do our calculations. Well, our H0 is that there's no change. Yeah. Um, in in the um, in the percentage. So what does that actually mean in practice? It means that the um, there'll be no difference between the medians. So um, the median difference. I'm going to write that as MD will equal zero, won't it? Median difference will be zero. There'll be no change, yeah? So if I took the difference up here between the before and after, in this case, I've got a plus six, yeah? 
that would be my, that's the difference. And what I'm saying is, if there's no change, then the median difference should be the same. And what are they saying as our H1? Well, they're saying that the take up should increase. So the median difference should be greater than zero. Yeah. So in a pair testing, we're always going to be comparing with zero, aren't we? We don't have, um, because we're just looking at a difference. If there's no difference, it's going to be zero. So what I've written down here then is our table of values. So these are the differences. If I went back up, I calculated the first one, didn't I, as being plus six. Oops, let's do that in red. That one's a plus six. If I looked at the next one here, the difference is minus one. The next one, the difference is plus five, yeah. Uh, next one, the difference is minus four. So those are the that's our test data now is the differences, yeah. Okay. And so what I've done is just taken those values. So that's going to be my test data. Now, because I'm just comparing them with zero, I don't need to do anything else now about taking off a 28.7 or anything like in the last one. These are the values. I just need to rank them. So the one that's nearest to zero is this one here, minus one. So I'm interested in the one, aren't I there? So I'm going to rank that number one, and I know its sign is negative. My next one is uh, plus two, so that's a distant, different distances. Um, absolute value is two. So that's going to be my second ranking, and that's plus. And I go through, as I did before, just um, ranking them as how far away they are from zero, and then the pluses and minuses. So if I then um, sum up all my positives, so on my positives, I've got a plus six, a plus five, a plus nine, a plus seven, a plus two, and a plus eight. They add up to 37. That's my W, my will got some plus. My negatives are going to be my... Uh, minus one, minus four, minus three gives me eight. Yeah, eight plus seven is forty-five, isn't it? Now let's just check that my adding up is correct. My calculations. Well, n n plus one over two, so that's nine times ten over two gives forty-five. Tick. And my calculations are correct. And then I take the lower value because that's what I'm going to get in my critical values table. So I take my lower of those two values, and that's the test to, to be my test statistics. That's going to be eight. Then I need to get my critical value from the Wilcoxon table. Well, again, we're looking at a one tail, 5%, and our n sample size here is nine. So if we go into here, we're back into the first column, one tail, 5%. Um, sample size is 9, gives me a critical value of 8. There we are. So my critical value is 8. So what am I going to do? I'm going to again draw my number line here. Um, I could have had a Wilcoxon value anywhere between 0 and 45. With If we'd, um, there'd be no effect, we'd expect the H0, we'd have expected a Wilcoxon of about 22 and a half, yeah, halfway between the two. Um, I know my critical value is 8, so looking, because I've taken the lower end here, my critical region is then between 0 and 8, so that's my H1, my H, so I've got a high ho line here, and my test statistic um, here is 8, so there we are, that's probably given us, in our line gives us a view on this, doesn't it? So that's significant, isn't it? Because our test statistic of 8 equals our critical value of eight yeah so it's in the critical region so our result is significant and we've got sufficient evidence evidence to suggest or indicate indicate that indicate that what am i going to do now i'm just going to go back up and get the wording from above and put that into my answer to indicate that the campaign has been successful. So again, I'd slightly rewrite that in raising the percentage of receiving the booster. So that's how we do that question. Okay, so in summary, S3 non-parametric testing is basically Wilcox and Sign rank testing. It's the only one they're going to give you. Um, we rank the data above and below the median. Um, that we've got, we sum up the positives and the negatives, and, and we fight take the lower of those as our test statistic. We look up the critical values in the Wilcoxon test, and we carry out a hypothesis test. 
And just bear in mind that we can always go from zero to whatever our maximum Wilcoxon value is here. Um, and we, we put everything onto the line. Um, pair testing is designed to exclude other factors. So we only get the fact we're interested in by comparing like with like. Um, we take the differences and that becomes our test data is the difference between before and after, um, with or without the drug, whatever else is. And therefore we're starting from our median difference is zero as the world's unchanged and then you've got all your choices. And then again, we just go straight in and we rank some, uh, find our Wilcox and critical value and use that. So I hope that's of use. Best of luck.